Hi people, um, early hours of the morning here, it's windy outside. Um, I want to talk about something that I, I hadn't intended to actually talk about, and honestly I've kind of been transfixed by it the last few hours. I've been looking at numerous angles, numerous videos related to this, and the whole thing raises a lot of questions. Um, uh, initially, my attention was caught by a YouTuber in exchange with Chinese tourists and some pancreastation. I kind of half noticed it and then clicked on it. Um, well, the so-called Chinese tourists, I, I even that now I've got questions about because the people involved were not really acting like typical tourists. So let's just go back to the base here and look at what, what this is about. Um, pianist, YouTuber by the name of Brendan Kavanagh. I must admit, I don't know the guy. Um, I've literally just come across him tonight, but he's apparently quite successful. You know, he's got a very active channel, a lot of support, particularly after this incident. But looking at a few of his other videos, he's got millions of views. He's a pianist. Um, Middle-aged British guy. Um, he comes across to me as pretty reasonable. I, I honestly don't know him well, but uh, yeah, he comes across pretty reasonable. Um, so he was performing in uh, St Pancras Station, and he had a live stream going. And there was a Chinese group in the background, uh, which I understand consisted of... Um, young man, two young women, and uh, I don't know how big the group was altogether, but certainly there was three, three individuals who kind of were the focus. There may have been a few others, but I think it was three, so it wasn't a massive group. Um, and initially, there was no problems. Uh, he was doing the live stream. Uh, I know at one point he was sort of, seemed to be confused if they were Japanese, or there was just some issues there. Um... But, you know, nothing, nothing serious. There was no, I, I don't think that was any major controversy. But anyway, the group came over and basically they were polite, has to be said. Initially, they were polite. They were friendly enough. They said they enjoyed the music, but they didn't want to be on film. And they asked him if he could stop filming. Now, bear in mind, this is a live stream. And I've done live streams, not in the same setting, but... You know, to cut off a live stream means you're cutting off all your subscribers. You just cut off like that. So it's not really possible to just stop filming like that. It's a public place, and that is a very important aspect of the story. It's a public place. St Pancras train station, it's big London terminus. It's a public place. He was absolutely within his legal rights to do what he was doing, um, performing to the public. Uh, the piano is not any piano. Apparently belongs Elton John, so... That's not really here or there, but it's just another detail to the story. Anyway, uh, that was that. But the, the group were initially quite polite. They said they enjoyed the music, but they didn't want to be on film. Then they got a little bit more pushy and a bit more testy, particularly the young man. Um, and he's been identified as one Newton Leng. Now, the reason I know his name is because uh, Master Tusi, hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, has done his homework and he's identified them. I'm going to put a link to that video because he's described it. He's went into the analysis of those identities probably better than I can um, here because I'm just, you know, going from what I recall from that video. You know, I don't have it right in front of me here. Uh, but I'll put a link. I'll put a link. Um, just a disclaimer on that point, by the way. I... I'm not a big follower of um, Master Tusi. I certainly don't endorse all those positions. But if I was just to be like an echo chamber and just kind of use sources that I completely agree with, um, you know, I'd never be able to link sources. It just, that's not the way the world works. So um, I am using him as a source for this video. Doesn't mean I am endo endorsing him in other areas, but, you know, I give him his due, he's done his homework. Now, why is it important to expose these people? Because, like I say, initially they were polite enough, but then the guy particularly started getting quite aggressive, and at one point he really shouted. He claimed that Mr. Kavanagh was touching one of the girls. Now, you know, he said it so the whole station could hear. Uh, Mr. Kavanagh denied that and said he was touching the flag, and 
they used the race card, which I thought was very cynical and pathetic, uh, because he said, this is not communist China, you know, um, this is the UK, this is Britain, uh, this is a public place. Now, it's very important to consider that during this whole interaction, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh, apparently he goes by the name Dr. K, was very calm. You know, he wasn't yelling, he wasn't being aggressive, he was very calm, unlike Newton Leng. So here's Newton Leng. Well, he's had a lot of different jobs. He's worked for a number of different companies. His Instagram page doesn't really show anything particularly exciting. It shows a few gym shots, nothing particularly obvious, you know. Um, I've had dealings with Chinese nationalists and the so-called 50 Cent Army, that is these hyper-aggressive nationalists, and usually the, you can spot them a mile off because, you know, the Chinese flags are everywhere and it's always, they're always pushing conspiracy theories about the West. But, you know, if, let's say, there are fifth columnists working in this country, let's just say it in terms of espionage, of course they're going to be subtle. Of course they're going to be careful uh, about how they go about things. They'll blend in. I remember the case of Christine Lee. She was a solicitor in Birmingham. You know, pillar of the community, absolutely normal, middle-class woman. She was involved in Chinese community. She had no criminal record. She turned out to be a Chinese spy. So, I mean, you just really need to consider that that is how esp espionage works. I, I probably should reiterate she was accused of being a Chinese spy. Uh, she denied it. I should put that caveat, but... You know, I I absolutely do not trust this group based on the way they were behaving. They were not acting like tourists. You know, some sources are saying a group of tourists. They, uh, Chinese tourists don't behave that way. Chinese tourists actually like photographs. In my experience, they tend to like being in films. They like taking photographs. This group claimed that they were... The reason they were there is because they were filming something for the Chinese New Year for Chinese television. Chinese New Year this year is February the 11th. Um, so actually it's a little bit early, um, but that's, that's what they said. Um, the girl, one of the girls have subsequently uh, made a response video purporting to show their point of view. And she says the reason they didn't move on, as people have suggested, is because they were waiting for a producer or something. But frankly, that's beside the point. That's their problem. You know, they have no right to tell this guy to stop filming when he's doing a live stream in a public place. And very, very important to note, it's not like he was just going up to them and filming them, filming them without their permission. In that case, I could understand anyone would be annoyed by that. That is not what happened here. You know, I've seen those Auditor UK people and I don't have much respect for their tactics because they are provocateurs. They'll just go up and get into people's faces and just gold people and... You know, this is not the same thing. This guy was um, in a piano in some Panther station doing a live stream, which he was totally entitled to do. They came up to him, not the other way around. They came up to him. Um, they simply could have gone to another part of the station. They could have moved out of the frame. They chose to make this into a drama, particularly the guy. Um... The women were less aggressive, but, you know, they were still playing the victim and using the race card, which was pathetic. One of the women claimed that she's British. She may well be. She may be a British citizen. If that is the case, if that is the case, uh, then she will know full well that he was within his rights to do what he was doing. Now, regarding the race baiting, what he said, what Dr. K said in the video was, this is not China. You've got communist flags. This is This is Britain. That's all he said. He didn't make some sort of racist statement like go back to China or something like that. He said, this is Britain. He simply pointed out, you know, you're waving Chinese flags. You're telling me what to do. This is the UK. We have freedom of speech here. We have freedom of assembly. So um, th this is a point that I find pretty contentious. The British Transport Police came over. I forget which mark in the video it is. I'm going to put a link to it because apparently they're threatening to get it taken down. And the policeman was, you know, actually said to them, yeah, he's he's allowed to do that here. When they try complaining, the policewoman 
Now, um, Dr. K spoke to her on a personal basis. He knew her name. I don't know if that was from a tag or just spoken to her before or what. But I did not like her attitude. She was basically acting like what he accused her of, which was acting like their personal security guard. You know, she denied that. Um, when he said that all he said was, you know, this is Britain, uh, not China, she said, oh, you can't say that. Now, what a pathetic and gutless response by the police. Shame on that policewoman. It's not her job, the police sensitivities. It's really not. And it's yet another example of a so-called non-crime hate incident, or it's no doubt she was interpreting it that way, in which case it really, really shouldn't be a police matter. In fact, the, where the police probably should have got involved, and I think... If I was Dr. K, I would have actually turned around to them and said, excuse me, officer, this young man threatening me. He's raising his voice to me. That's where, that's where the police should have been involved. I mean, the whole thing just raises question marks. The good news is it's all over the place. It went viral and it has not cast them in a good light. You know, if they wanted anonymity, they failed miserably because... They're all over the place now. Like I say, Master Tusi has kind of named them. Um, the the young women, apparently, they're students. I think one of them's an influencer. Uh, Newton Lang, you know, that's his Western name, I assume, Newton. Um, apparently, he's worked for the Financial Times. He's worked for a Confucius Institute. Now, that's very significant because Confucius Institutes are widely suspected of being a front for the Chinese Communist Party. They've already been banned in several European countries, including, I believe, Sweden and the Netherlands. Uh, but definitely Sweden, I think, the Netherlands, maybe Germany. Um, Rishi Sunak promised to close him down when he became Prime Minister. I don't know if that's happened yet. Um, you know, he's been Prime Minister well over a year. I'm disappointed by Sunak's record on China. I think he's went soft. You know, campaigning for leader, he was talking tough. I think he's went soft. Same with James Cleverly. Um, but, you know, the implications of this are very serious, where basically you have a group of Chinese nationals who, at least, you know, most of them are. Um, like I say, one of the young women claims that she's a British citizen. But, you know, they're effectively harassing a British citizen and doing something completely lawful because of their sensitivities. Now, I've got questions over why they're so um, they're so cagey about what they were doing. I mean, they say they were filming for Chinese TV. I don't know if it's supposed to be some surprise thing for the Chinese New Year. It might be as innocent as that, just because the New Year hasn't happened yet. But really, um, I don't know what exactly could be exposed in his live stream. All you really see is them in the background. It's not like they were... I, I, I can't see what they were so cagey about, really. Also, they are not. They don't really look like tourists. The young women look kind of like flight attendants. To me, the way they were dressed, they had these like red suits on, they had Chinese flags. Um, there are a lot of events for Chinese New Year, and that's there's nothing in of itself suspicious about that. Um, but the whole implications of this, firstly... There is a use of racial sensitivities. Like, you know, if someone points out that we are in the UK, that is now racist. I mean, that really disgusts me. Chinese nationalists will use that card, uh, you know, whenever they get a chance to do so. But it absolutely goes without saying that a British tourist could not go to China and just go around making demands, telling people to stop filming. I remember actually when I was in China, in fact, there is a lot of attention on Western tourists all the time. Personally, I didn't mind it. Some Westerners find it uncomfortable, but, you know, we can't exactly go around in China making demands. We really couldn't. Because what would happen in China, say, for example, you had an argument with a kiosk vendor over there, what would happen is a crowd would gather around and they would absolutely be on the side of the vendor because, it's, you know, the nationalism kicks in. Um, I think a lot of people do notice that with some Chinese nationals, there's an arrogance, there's an entitlement when they're in other countries. This has been seen in Asia. Um, you know, often Chinese tourists have been accused 
of behaving in a very entitled way. It's not that British tourists have a great reputation. I don't have to be honest about that. We don't. But within Asia, um, especially Chinese tourists have often been accused of acting in an entitled way in other countries, in South Korea, in Vietnam, Thailand, um, because they tend to come from quite wealthy backgrounds. Uh, Chinese students in the UK are almost universally from wealthy backgrounds because they have to be. The fees are very high. Uh, they pay a lot of money to come here. Um, and, you know, if you look at the profiles of these people, they're all high flyers. They're influencers. They've got connections. They've been in many companies. Um, they've got connections all over the place. Now, does that mean that they're CCP spies? Not necessarily. But definitely in the case of Newton Lang, the fact that he worked for Confucius Institute, the fact is, in the Chinese system, you know, if you're in any sort of business or you're in any sort of uh, ambitious position, you have to have CCP connections. That's just the way the system works. Confucius Institutes almost certainly, you know, on the surface, they seem harmless enough. It's for culture exchange, you know, um, Chinese um, yeah, you know, it's in the name, Confucius Institutes. They're not called Mao Institutes. But that's because the CCP is very good at this stuff. They're very manipulative and they're very good at um, those sort of underhand tactics. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up soon, but I'm, I'm going to... There's a few... I mean, there's a lot of elements to this. There's a lot of layers to it. At one point in the video... Um, you know, there's a video, a channel called Free China, and there's a guy in that who's sort of uh, talking about a response video one of the young women made, and she claims she's been getting lots of abusive messages since. That's not right, you know. Um, that's certainly the way that CCP thugs behave. Um, Wu Mao nationalists behave that way. Um, I don't think she should get any abuse. Um, but at the same time, she's acting like some would say a Chinese Karen. I don't really use that term, but some have described it that way. Uh, and certainly playing the race card and then sort of creating a drama suggesting that he touched her. He touched her flag. That's not the same thing. Uh, and again, they approached him, not the other way around. Um, well, uh, there's a few things I find striking in their behaviour. For example, the fact that they're on the surface quite polite. They say they enjoy the music, but then the guy suddenly gets very aggressive and he really shouts. Like the whole station heard it, you know? That's that's interesting. Kind of makes you think that uh, there's more to this guy. Maybe he just has a temper problem. But anyway, in that video, uh, Free China, that was analysing this, um, it was pointed out. No, excuse me. Uh, um, please excuse me. There's a lot of videos related to this. I'm crossing my wires a bit. Um, Maso Tusi actually pointed out that in the, there's a new dynamic to this, which is it's been pointed out that in the original video, it's about 37 minutes long, at the roughly 13.32 mark, when Newton Lang gets angry, you can hear the young woman shouting, don't shout him, don't shout him. Now, it's a bit muffled, and, you know, Dr. K himself didn't really hear what was said. You know, it, it, I guess it does come down to perception. But some people think they heard, don't shoot him. That's sinister. That is sinister. And they're insinuating that Newton Lang is actually some sort of security guy with these young women. And that's troubling. Very, very troubling. Um, now, there's no evidence for that. It's just conjecture. Maybe there's nothing to it. Um, certainly, if that had escalated into violence then I would like to think the police would have the backbone to do the right thing and arrest the Chinese party. But, you know, would they? Would they? Because, frankly, there's been too many examples in this country of Chinese nationalists acting in an aggressive way and getting away with it in universities uh, and at other settings. Uh, a few years ago, the, the CGTN, well, then CCTV correspondent, um, Kong Lin Ling, you know, she got into this tirade against the human rights activist Benedict um, Rogers at an event in Birmingham. Uh, she did get escorted away, but it's there's just too many examples of Chinese nationals thinking they could behave this way. 
Now, of course, we have to be careful not to get into generalizations. I always say that. Um, but this group was acting suspiciously, I think. Um, it may be that they were, it really was just a case that they were doing something for the Chinese New Year. But why so cagey about it? If it's meant to be something that's going to be a surprise, there's nothing revealed in his live stream. Regardless, if you know, if they were waiting for a producer, that is their problem. They have no right to tell him to stop filming in the middle of a live stream. It's not like he was focusing on them. There was a lot of other people in the video. So they have no right to do that. They have no right to make that demand. You know, they're saying they have the rights of personal privacy, not really in a public place. Yes, if someone goes up to your face and rams a camera in your face, but if someone's just filming publicly, no. You know, if a news team is filming, you can't go up to the them and say, stop filming. I also question the police priorities. Why is it this policewoman took it on herself to badger Mr. Kavanaugh over this? You know, he wasn't arrested because he'd commit no crime. But she basically made it clear that she wanted to harass him over this. That's a disgraceful example of police overreach. And it happens too many times. I think it's a soft option, basically. I think there are police who take the soft option. But it has to be asked, are the British police now basically, I would go so far as to say serving the CCP, but are they pandering to CCP sensitivities? Really? Because I would cite another example. The Australian human rights activist Drew Pavlo was absurdly accused of making a bomb threat against the Chinese embassy a while back. Now, there was absolutely no basis for that. And if the Metropolitan Police had simply looked at the IP address, they would have realised there was no basis to it. In all likelihood, it was CCP activists trying to smear him because he's an outspoken CCP critic. I mean, the Metropolitan Police really, really... Um, you know, put a lot of resources into that. Now, I appreciate they have to take that seriously, but the way they handled it, I think, was just an assumption of guilt. In the end, he had to go back to Australia and, you know, he had to spend lots, I understand, of his own money on legal fees. And it, it was just, uh, I, I don't know if he's even been completely clear, cleared on that. You know, if anyone, Drew Pavlo, I have a lot of respect for the guy. I think he's very consistent on the issue of human rights. You know, he's not biased. I think he's very consistent. I have a lot of respect for the guy. But um, he has been targeted by Chinese nationals because of his work. And the Metropolitan Police, instead of recognising this, they just immediately believed the Chinese embassy. Why? I understand they have to take it seriously, but they should be looking into, you know, just look at the IP address and they would see that he was innocent. So why did they draw out for so long? I think they want to just please the Chinese embassy. Oh, yes. Well, will, you know, protect you. I think there's questions to be asked. What's the British Transport Police doing? You know, there's uh, their police woman. Why is she harassing this guy when he hasn't committed any crime? You know, so-called non-crime hate incidents. Frankly, the police shouldn't be wasting time on them. The only way the police should have been involved there is, frankly, with threatening behaviour of Newton Leng. Dr. K had not been threatening at all. I'm sick and tired of the police thinking that they can police feelings and language. That is something that we really, really need to roll back on. Yes, if someone's making an explicit threat, that's a different matter. But, you know, saying this is the UK, not China, the fact that our police are so politically correct and so prone to pandering to race bearers that they would actually say, no, you can't say that. It's bloody pathetic. It really makes me angry. That policewoman is a disgrace to her uniform. Um, and like I say, the whole time, Dr. K, you know, he really kept his composure. He didn't lose his temper. No doubt it was a right nuisance. And, um, you know, at some point, some you could tell he was quite intimidated. Anyone would be when uh, Newton Lang, acting like a thug, just yelled. Basically, the whole station could hear you know, what's to say he wasn't going to lash out? There wasn't any violence, but, you know, how did how did Dr. K know that? For all he knew, the, this young guy could have lashed out the way he was behaving. And I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I'll put two videos. I'll put the original video. But please, please share that. Because at the moment, apparently, they're trying to get it taken down. That would be a damn disgrace if that is taken down. 
it would mark, uh, you know, make YouTube spineless. And it would really raise questions over what influence Chinese state has. Really. I think too much. Too damn much. Um, because the government's too soft on China. Um, there's question marks over the police response to Chinese sensitivities. Our universities, too many university departments are clearly in bed with Chinese money. Um the only thing that's really left is the press and, you know, individuals making YouTube videos. But I, I personally think that the Chinese state has its tentacles in this country. And that's not xenophobic. It's not anything against individual Chinese citizens. Um, it would be wrong, you know, to say every Chinese national is a spy. There are, you know, Chinese people in this country who really are just students. Business people, that's not so clear cut because, you know, to, to basically to have a business in China, you need CCP connections. And there was, um, if I haven't already mentioned this, there was a Birmingham solicitor, Christine Lee, who was accused of being a Chinese spy. Now, for years, she'd been a pillar of the community. She'd been involved in community projects. She had no criminal record, you know, perfectly middle class, middle aged woman. Um, but it turns out that she may well have been a Chinese spy. Her practice then closed, and uh, I don't know what the latest is on that case, because the Foreign Office understandably is cagey on the details of these things. I do hope, though, I do hope that when we get um, examples of Chinese espionage in this country, you know, they shouldn't be allowed to slink off into the night. They should be arrested. They should be arrested. Because you could be damn sure the Chinese side would be doing that to British nationals accused of espionage. You know, the government needs some backbone. We need to stand up to China. They've got it right regarding Russia. They've been consistent on that, and I've given Sunak a lot of credit on that, as with Liz Truss and Boris Johnson. Of those three, only Liz Truss has been consistently tough on China. Johnson and Sunak have flip-flopped on the issue of China. It's not good enough. The West needs to, it depresses me, because I think that uh, they're taking us for a ride. And, you know, what I would say to Chinese nationals is, yes, you've got rights, but you have no right to come to the UK and just make demands and act in an entitled way. And, you know, feel that you can't respect the host nation that you just have. You could go around making demands doesn't work that way, or it shouldn't work that way. But there really is a lot of implications in this case, and I'm going to wrap this up. Um, but please do share the videos, that's very, very important. And thanks for watching.